and we're back. So if you're new here, I've done what I usually do and commit to things and then question why I've committed to them. Let me explain. So a few weeks back, I'm at my buddy Chris's place and he's got this talon that was taken apart, no kidding, like 12 years ago. And nobody seems to remember how to put it back together. I'm sure Chris does, but Chris is a very busy guy. And these talons are actually very hard to come by. So I thought to myself, hey, why wouldn't you put this engine back in this car that you didn't take out and you don't know anything about and seems like a terrible idea. Now I fully expect to run into some problems along the way, but we're gonna run into some major issues along the way and let me tell you why. Because Chris doesn't know where all the parts are. Now Chris has a lot of talons and eclipses he's taken apart, but the specific parts for this car, he doesn't know where they are. We're in agreement that this car should be brought back to as close to OE as possible because it is such a clean car. Let me walk you around and kind of show you around the car. So that said, we have the TSI Talon here. The engine is out of it and just a quick look under the hood here. We're gonna run into a few issues. Now I did notice in the last video that those CV axles, I believe the left and right are mixed up. The reason that the long one is on the wrong side for some reason. Power string pump here, there's a power string part pump on the engine we're going to, so we're gonna run into that. Uh, I just noticed there's no battery tray. And battery tray is missing. So there's that, and as I hold up the hood and I look around here, there is no hood prop anywhere. If you guys see it, let me know, but I do not see one anywhere. So that's another issue. That said, overall, it is a very clean example of a Talon TSI. Like, you just, you don't see them this nice very often. There is the typical rust starting down here, and in the wheel wells, it's actually much worse on the other side. And that's pretty normal, we've got Oh, we've got a intermediate shaft sitting there. Inside we have the pretty cool confetti interior and the center console taken apart. What else do we have? And in the back with the struts that don't work, we've got a couple of rads. We've got, it looks like a downpipe maybe. We've got an intercooler, some solenoids of some sort and an intake. Now, if you saw the last video, you saw I started assembling the engine as much as I could to a certain extent. Again, problems we're gonna run into, we're missing a lot of things. I noticed there's no O2 sensor. There's a gasket kit missing for this. The turbo is actually no good. The exhaust side of it is cracked right there and runs all the way through to here. So there's that. Other things I noticed, the speed sensor is missing. We don't have any of the intercooler piping for up here. We do have this random box. I did use the other one of that. That's for a different car. I think that's for a 1G because none of it lines up. We do have some rad hoses. We do have a blow off valve. That's definitely a cold side pipe. And then we have a random box of parts over there. So to get the game plan in place, I think what we're gonna start with, we're gonna get the car up, we're gonna get the wheels off, we're gonna get those CV axes out of there. We're going to remove the lower uh, structure that has the lower mount on it. Because uh, I want to try and drop the car onto this engine. I think it's going to be the easiest way to do it. And as a goal today, I would like to get that engine sitting in the car. Not, you know, no harnesses or anything. And I just saw this. There's no fuel pressure regulator. So we're missing that too. There's a lot of parts missing. We're going to have to hit up Chris, see if we can, we can shake him down and find out where all these parts are. Because, I mean, well, we need them. So... Let's get into it. Well, as a mechanic, if there's one thing I hate, it's looking for a wheel key. And Chris, you're a sharp guy. He left it right in the center console where I could find it. So before we even take this wheel off, one thing I like to do is, uh, just like that, see? We've got a very, very loose wheel bearing. I'm gonna guess that it has something to do with those CB axles, but we'll see. So we'll get this off. Well, it does have the crown nut on here. It doesn't have a cotter pin in it, but it does have the crown nut on here, but that wheel bearing was definitely, definitely loose. I feel it now, but. Yeah, anyway, we're gonna have to get a wheel bearing for this side. Is it a press in style? No, it's a hub, so that's nice. So we'll get a wheel bearing for this off Rock Auto. See what else we can get into over there. Next side. Oh my Lord. This wheel's about to fall off here, this wheel bearing so bad. Can you see how much movement that is? That's two inches of play. 
or even more on this side. So yeah, we definitely are gonna need a couple of front wheel bearings. Hmm, hmm, I wonder why we have wheel bearing problems. What's sad is that wheel bearing looks new. And this is why it's no good to now. Perfect. Well, we're three minutes into toweling and chill and uh, we have another problem. I don't, know, I don't know how I commit to these things, but uh, let me explain. So this is the intermediate shaft that was in the back seat. I decided to put it on now. As you can see, we have one hole that lines up over here to the bolt hole there. Like that, and this one goes to nothing. You can see one originally went over here, but nothing there. Now a quick look online on Google shows that this intermediate shaft is different than the all wheel drive. This is a front wheel drive intermediate shaft. Or was it the other way around? Was it a front wheel drive block? I don't know. Either the block is front wheel drive or the intermediate shaft was. So we either need a different AC bracket or, because the AC bracket has a mount, mounting location, or a different intermediate shaft. So we're gonna come back to that. I'll deal with it once it's in the car and uh, let the fun continue. I just noticed this. I don't even know what connector goes there. That looks like an O2 sensor. I don't know what that is, but it's obviously been fixed once already. So we need that mystery connector from Chris as well. This list keeps getting longer. I just went on eBay and I ordered the upper inner cooler pipe. I ordered fuel regulator sensor, the speed sensor. I, I don't even know. There was like 20 things I had to order. Yeah, well, we'll keep going here. Oh, and I ordered wheel bearings too. On a positive note, positive? Is, pos is positive -er a word? I don't think so. Ugh. On a positive note, we're gonna go underneath, we're gonna take that cross member out, and I think we're gonna set the engine, no, we're gonna set the car down on the engine, and I'm hoping it fits in this hole. I did measure it roughly with the tape, and it did look like it fit. However, I have concerns because like that rear mount right there, I don't know, we're gonna see. If it doesn't fit, we'll drop it in from the top, but it'd just be easier this way. So we're gonna check it out. What a beautiful hole, look at that. And that's exactly the hole we're gonna stick our engine into. Looking underneath, the car is actually very clean. There is a lot of mechanics wire everywhere. Like there's some here, there's more here, some there. I just, there was some oh, over there. There's mechanic wire everywhere, but I mean, look how nice and clean the plastic is. All right, so game plan here. I'm gonna put the mount in here loosely in place. I need to find the bolt and the mystery bolts that goes in there. And then we do have over here under the harness, there is another mount right there. Now my concern is we know already that this mount goes up there because it looks high enough. My concern comes into this mount I put on here. It was just in the box, the holes line up, puzzle fits. This is considerably lower than that mount. I don't know if this sits in there or if the engine's gonna sit on an angle. It is level right now. So we're gonna find out in a few minutes. Well guys, just getting the last few uh, bolts done up here to, uh, I guess they're nuts actually. So I've just got this mount and that mount, but it's enough that we can get this thing in the air. We'll get it in the air and then we'll put that bottom member on and then we've got the back mount to put back together. And then that's the easy stuff. We still have all the hard stuff to do. All of this wiring, I don't know where any of it goes. I don't know how any of it was routed. We have the turbo to get on, we have all the exhaust to get on. We have two power steering pumps, so we need to get rid of one of those. Uh, we have to go online and find what parts are missing for all of the intake and stuff, but uh, there's the AC compressor up here we have to get on, so uh, we gotta wait to know. The good news is, we're only about an hour into it. 
So things are going pretty good, all things considered. So I guess rough game plan. I'm just gonna start loosely, I think, laying out where I think things go and go from there. We've got the turbo issue to resolve. The fuse box, at least we know, goes in that area. It's not bolted down, but it goes there. We have all of this to sort out. At least we know that's the alternator wire. We have that lower member to put on to hold the engine in place. An hour in and I feel defeated. That can't be a good sign. I have other concerns though, like this AC pump was wired up here with this mechanics wire and it's definitely not gonna fit through there. So we're gonna have to undo the line. I'm assuming the system has nothing left in it because it's been sitting since 1985. Not literally, of course, not, not literally, no. All right, cue the music. Okay, some of you might think I'm nuts or talking out my ass, but this actually is starting to make sense. Let me explain. So we know we have, wherever it went, we have our throttle cable here, which goes here. We have our ground wire here, which goes somewhere on the block. We have this wire, or sorry, this hose, which I am assuming is a PCB system hose that goes there. Okay. Over here, we have a banjo bolt fitting here. I have not found where that goes yet. Oh, I know why. That's the fuel system and we're missing our regulator. Okay, so we need that still. We're gonna need that line. We'll hit up Chris for that line yet. We're missing a battery tray. We need a battery tray over here to hold the battery. I'm assuming the battery went over here. All right, this mess, we have all these connectors. We have to figure out where they go, but we do know they go somewhere in this area. Some of them loop over there. And the way we're gonna find that is we're gonna start with the injectors and this very distinctive plug right there. So this distinctive plug is going to be right here, which makes sense because we have our injector plugs here. So that's good. Uh, what else do we have? Our shifter cables are down here. They go here, but we are missing the retaining clips. We'll hit Chris up for those. We do have what looks like a fuse box power here, which I'm not sure what it is. We'll figure that out. That could be the battery main power as well. These look like they're definitely for a fuse box. So those probably go over here. Oh wait, that doesn't make sense. Those are good battery supply because they're going into the fuse box. All right, we'll come back to that. So we're kind of making headway here on this side anyway. We still need this entire intake system need to get our turbo on, but we're going in the right direction. All right guys, it wasn't bad, quick 30 minutes. So we've got a few things happening here. We do got a few broken connectors. Oh, I just noticed that one there, although I suspect I broke that one. This one, the little mount is broken on it. Extra map sensor there. Um, we're gonna need a throttle body gasket. Lots of random connectors, although I pushed the starter wires down there. There was an exciter wire and the main wire for the starter that was up here. I don't know where this goes. See, the thing is, we've got a mounting hole here and a mounting hole here and a mounting hole back here. Naturally, it wants to. Never mind. I just figured it out. It goes right here. Yeah, it goes like that. Okay, never mind. I figured that out just now. But yeah. Overall, I think things are going. Things are going pretty good. All right, update, we're like five hours into this thing right now, but I just spent about an hour of it 
messing with the AC compressor. Let me explain. So I was trying to figure out why this AC bracket didn't fit this AC compressor. Now we know the compressor is from the car because it was still in the car. And I wasn't sure if at some point in its life things had got mixed up. So when it was in the car, I was trying to bolt it up. The bottom two you can kind of see, but the top two you're going at blind. So I was trying to figure out why I couldn't grab any threads. So I finally got frustrated and pulled it out. I was just talking to Chris about it and uh, you can see how far off the bolts are. So as it turns out, this is a 1G bracket. Just looking on eBay, this is a 1G bracket. And for those unfamiliar, the 1G bracket is the generation before this car. And I was already kind of confused because I knew this intermediate shaft lined up with the hole here that I had to line up with that we talked about this morning. And it was all the way in, but this one didn't line up. So I was trying to figure that out, but now it all makes sense. This bracket is for the generation before this. So that said, we're kind of catching up on things here until we get some parts from Chris, but uh, maybe I'll throw the intercooler in here. Let me show you under here. So things are coming along. I've got everything on. I've got the main ground on. I got to get some cotter pins here. I don't want to put the rad in until we have the turbo in. We've got to get a new turbo from Chris yet. I think these are the coolant lines for the turbo. That's the oil drain for sure. Hmm, I don't know where the oil feed is. I actually haven't seen it yet. We're gonna get all this stuff from Chris, hopefully tomorrow or the next day over here. We got a few vacuum lines. I'm not sure where this goes or this goes, but we'll figure that out. It's usually pretty quick to figure out. Got a ground we gotta throw on here. I did get the main engine ground on already. So things are moving on. Let's uh, let's get the intercooler in here. Let's see what that looks like. Six hours later. And we back. So we went to Chris's place, we got a bunch of parts we're gonna put on the car here. I did find some other parts in the car <clears throat> in the back. So as we're thinning out the parts, thank goodness, because there was a lot. There's some I don't know, like, okay, so we do have a downpipe here. We're gonna try and get this on today because we have the other turbo now. I'm not sure where this goes. This is a coolant reservoir overflow Chris does not have, so we're gonna have to source something out. This is definitely an upper rad hose, I think, or maybe a lower, but I think an upper. And we have an intake here with the tube on it. So this will go to the blow off valve. So this all said, we're gonna try and get it together here, see what we can do. You know, including going out to Chris's place and getting some of the missing parts and stuff like that. You know, we're only about eight hours into it right now, which if you were to do this swap, that's, that's atrocious time. Like, but I didn't take the car apart. I don't know, I'm working with a box of bolts. I mean, overall, I think things are going pretty good. So uh, we're gonna get going. We're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna keep moving and uh, Keep productive, see what happens. Okay, so there's no shortage of vacuum line mysteries here. There's this one, something's supposed to go here. I almost wanna assume it's a vacuum manifold. We have these two over here. Now we do have down on this side, the boost solenoid vacuum lines here as well. Now one can only assume that the main charge pipe has a signal. So I'm gonna guess maybe it goes in here and then comes out and goes to the actuator on the uh, wastegate. 
I, I, I don't know at this point. We're getting close though. We do have more vacuum lines down here. So we'll have to figure that out yet. There's a lot of mystery. So with that said, you guys probably don't want to see me fiddle and fumble around with vacuum lines. So to be continued, I will see you on the next one. Make sure you go to the good stuff. Like, subscribe, share the video. Peace.